I am excited. I'm really, really excited because we are coming to the close of the first week of the 52 weeks of the year 2023. And uh, you have done, done so well. We are on the seventh day of the 365 days of Bible Marathon, going through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And I am glad that you've chosen to stay and to tune. And I believe that this journey has been exciting both for you and to me. And as you go to discover what God is saying in his word, it's going uh, to be quite, quite a wonderful moment. If I had a badge, please, I would have given to you. Because this is a hurdle that you've taken. And more so, if you've never gone through the Bible, congratulations. You're in Genesis chapter number 21. That's what we'll be delving in today. We'll be looking at Genesis chapter number 21 all the way to Genesis chapter number 23. And I believe by the grace of God, you are going to be blessed. Can you just bow down our heads in prayer? Just say a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we honor you today. We thank you for your grace just to take us through the seven days and through the first uh, week of this Bible marathon. Yeah, we've got 51 more weeks to go. And Lord, we are excited and we are glad to be here today. Lord, how we pray as you go through your word, through the grace, through your grace and through the power and the person of the Holy Spirit, that as we do, uh, as we do look into the word, that Jehovah Father, you shall bring revelation, light and understanding into our hearts. For your word does decree that the entrance of your word brings light into our hearts. So Father, I pray today that our hearts will be open to receive what you want to deposit in them today. We honor you and we love you. In Jesus' mighty name, we do trust, praying and believing. Amen and amen. Remember, saints, Luke, 4, 4, 4, uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 4 says, What? Uh, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And more so, uh, John chapter number uh, 21, uh, John chapter number 14, verses 21, sorry. It says, if he who keeps my word and my commandments, it is he that loves me. You cannot profess that you love the Lord Jesus Christ if you're not addicted and love his word. And so I see a lot of believers, they come to church faithfully. They sing in the choir. They dance in, uh, in the church. They serve in the church, but they're not addicted to his word. Jesus Christ is clear and he says, he who keeps my word, it is he that loves me. And he that loves me, my father shall love him as well. And I will come and manifest myself in their lives. Uh, a lot of believers have been in the church for many, many years. But they do not testify that the Lord has manifested himself in their lives. If you want to see God operate in your life, if you want to see God manifest in your life, you must become a word addict. Not only a word addict, but a doer of his word. It is loving his word that that uh, that shows or portrays your love for him so today we are in genesis uh, chapter number one and by the grace of god i believe we shall be able to get into genesis chapter number uh, 23 so genesis chapter number 21 the bible says and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did for sarah as he had spoken may this be your portion in the name of jesus christ that the lord visited sarah as he had said, hello, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. Our God is a faithful God. What God has said, that shall he also do. Be encouraged, my friend. Be encouraged, my sister. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, as you put it in your heart and accept it by faith, then God is obligated to do what he has said. He will be able to perform as he has spoken in the name that is above every other name. If he did it for Sarah, he can do it for you. Sarah came to a place that he, she thought that it is done with her. It shall not be so with her. It cannot be done with her. Saying that she is old and you know her time is gone. And even Abraham at some point he thought that maybe the promise, yes, is coming through Ishmael and not Isaac. But it was not so. It was not so. The promise was to come through Isaac. I want to tell you today, it might take long. The vision might tarry. The promise might have taken long, but it will surely come 
that the Lord will visit you in your life. I pray that this year of the Lord 2023, whatever the promises that God has ever spoken in your life, that this shall be the year, this shall be the season before the year comes to an end. The Lord will have visited you concerning what he has said in his life and pertaining to what he has spoken over your life. He is a faithful God. Numbers 23, 19 says that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. As he not said it, shall he not fulfill it. Our God is a great God. He stands true to his word. In fact, it says that he has honored his word far above his name. And I want to believe in your life today. As you study God's word, as you look into God's word, he shall visit your life. As he speaks into your life, he shall manifest every promise that he has spoken in your life. You believe that you can say a big a name. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God has spoken to him. Remember, we have said that God has got a time and he says his time is the set time. Please, saints, do not lose heart. Do not lose faith. So the promise may seem to have, to have tarried. I want to tell you, you are in good company. When God speaks, there is a time that he has set. If you do not lose heart, if you mix faith with patience, then the set time will surely come in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, the Bible says in verses number three, and Abraham called on the name the name of his son who was to who was to born to him, whom Sarah bore to him Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded. Now you see, I uh, 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 Abraham here is staying true to the covenant that he had with God, and it stays it stays true. By the time Isaac is in eight years old, he fulfills as he had promised God. And as, as God, sorry, had commanded him. And Adam, uh, Abraham stood true to his word upon, uh, upon the covenant of God over his life. Verses 5. Now Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh. And all who here will laugh with me. She also said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah will nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. I want to believe that as God visits you, you will laugh as Sarah. The first time Sarah laughed, it was like a, it was like a, a not a laugh of doubt, but a laugh of astonishment. Will this really thing come? Doesn't God see my age? I'm now 90 years old. Does God see that? Uh, will this really happen? It was, a, it was just a laugh of, you know, is, 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 will it really happen? But this time, it is a laugh of fulfillment. She is laughing because God has fulfilled what he had promised is going to fulfill. And may God fill your, love with your mouth with laughter this year in the name of Jesus Christ. For he is a faithful God. Now Abraham, sorry, verses 8. So the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the same day. And Isaac was weaned. Verses 9. And Sarah saw the son of Agar, the Egyptian, whom she had born. To Abraham scoffing. Therefore she said to Abraham. Cast out this bond woman and her son. For the son of this bond woman. Shall not be heir with my son. Namely with Isaac. And the matter was very displeasing. In Abraham's sight. Because of his son. But God said to Abraham. Do not let it be displeasing in your sight. Because of the lad. Or because of your bond woman. Whatever Sarah has said to you. Listen to her voice. For in Isaac your seed shall be called. Now listen. Sarah says. I, I, I don't like the presence of Ishmael here. He does not rub well with my son. Now she's a little bit cocky. I, she does not. Uh, he does not rub well with my son. Now he refers to uh, Aga, not my maid servant, now bound woman. <laughs> now Sarah, uh, Aga has moved from my mistress and maid servant to this bound woman. <laughs> life, this life. Eh? Now she's a bound woman. Let her and her son depart from here. And, um, and uh, you know, things don't go well with her. Things don't go well with her. And uh, Abraham listens to this and he says, 
this thing troubles me. But now God visits and he says, let her go. Let Hagar go. Let Ishmael go. Because what I want and what I've promised is going to happen. So you love Ishmael, but my covenant shall be with Isaac. For Isaac, for, for in your seed, Isaac shall be called. Praise be the name of the living God. Verses 13. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bond woman, because he is your seed. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and putting it on her shoulder, he gave, he gave it and the, uh, he, he gave it and the boy to Hagar and sent, and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba and the waters in the skin was used up and she placed the boy under, under, under one of her shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shot. And she said to herself, let me not see the death of the boy. So he sat opposite him and lifted her voice and just wept. This is a sign of hopelessness. This is just a sign of hopelessness that she has. The water that she had been given, the pack that she had been given has been depleted. They're in the wilderness, they're in the desert. And the sun is about, uh, uh, you know, uh, to be dehydrated to death. And the pain of a mother could not bear to see the death of a child because of anger and thirst. And she says, the Bible says she put him at a place of a bow throw away. And she just waited for her son to die because it was a sight that was too painful for her to bear. Now listen, God is a God of remembrance and God is a God of covenant. Verse 17, and God heard the voice of the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord called to Agar out of heaven and said to her, What else you, Agar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the Lord where he is. Arise, lift up the Lord and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Again, he says, I will make Ishmael a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. So God was with the lad and he, he, he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. He dwelt in the wilderness of Paran and his mother took a wife for him and from the land of Egypt. So God sends his angel, preserves the life of the lad called Ishmael. And he says, this lad shall become great in this life and preserves this life, provides for this life. And uh, Ishmael goes ahead and gets a wife from the land of our mother's origin, the land of Egypt. What does this teach us? Because God had made a promise to Abraham. And because it is the seed of Abraham that shall be great, even though Ishmael was not the son of the covenant, God chose to watch over him. God chose to put his hand of protection and preservation over him. Yes, the destiny for Abraham is tied to Isaac. But God is not an affair God. He says, this descendant, this son of yours, he'll also become great. And I will preserve him. And God provides for him. Verses number 22. And it came to pass at the time that Abimelech and the Pichol the commander of his army spoke to Abraham saying, God is with you in all that you do. Now, therefore, swear to me by God that you will not deal falsely with me, with my offsprings or with my prosperity, but that according to the kindness that I have done to you, you will do to me, to the land in which you have dwelt. And Abraham said, then I will swear. It seems the story of Abraham and his infamous... Uh, treachery, deception of deceiving great people around him by calling Sarah, his wife, perhaps, his, his sister, sorry, perhaps, as his rumors are on the hood, are in the street. And uh, this commander comes and tells him, please pray, I pray with you, that you will not deceive me, that you will not deal with me shrewdly, because I have heard about your statement. I've heard about what you've done to the king of Egypt, uh, to Pharaoh and also to Abimelech. Please, don't deal with me treachery or with my prosperity. Just leave us the way we are. And the Bible says, and Abram made so a promise unto him. He swore. Verse 25, then Abram rebuked Abimelech because of, of a well of water which Abimelech's servant had seized. And Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing 
You did not tell me, nor had I heard of it until today. So Abram took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, and the two of them made a covenant. And Abram set seven new lambs of the flock by themselves. And Abimelech asked Abraham, what is the meaning of these seven new lambs which you have set, uh, set by, by themselves? And he said, you will take these seven new lambs from my hand that they may be my witness that I have dug this well. Therefore, he called this, the place Beersheba because the two of them saw an oath there. So Abraham uh, finds a conflict here in the land of Abimelech and uh, there's a well that he has dug and it seems there is somebody who is trying to do unjust against Abraham in possessing this well. And so he goes to Abimelech and Abimelech tells him, I know nothing about this and I will not interfere with it. And Abraham uh, takes uh, some animals, he takes uh, seven new uh, lambs, and he gives them to Abimelech as a sign and a covenant to, 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 to this day that is the one who has dug the well in Beersheba. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. So Abimelech rose with Pichol, the commander of his army, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. Then Abram planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and they are called in the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abram stayed in the land of the Philistines many, 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 many days. So Abram is a man who knew how to stay with his neighbors. And um, as children of God, we represent the kingdom of God. And seldom do we know how to live with the people around us. We treat them harshly. We judge them harshly. We are not hospitable to them uh, just because some of them are not born again. Uh, the Bible does not tell us to hate them. The Bible does not, uh, the scriptures uh, does not tell us to, to, to condemn them. But the scripture tells us to love them. It, 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 the, 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 the Bible speaks to us and tells us, do not be equally yoked with the unbelievers. It does not say hate them. It does not say, you know, uh, uh, condemn them or judge them. It just says, do not be equally yoked. In other words, do not be a partaker of their evilness and their shrewdness. But be hospitable to them. Because without showing them love, how will the people around us understand the gospel? Abraham was a man of the covenant with God. Abimelech and his army commander were not people with a covenant with God. But Adam, Abraham, sorry, because of his walk with God, his love for his God, he knew how to live with the people around him. It is my prayer and my desire today that this year you will choose to live with the people around you with love. Those who are not born again, do not be a partaker of their evil thoughts and their evil schemings, and their evil undertakings. No. Be the light of the world. Stay true to your calling. Stay true to your identity in Christ. But love the people around you. Because this is the only way that you will have uh, the opportunity to present the God that you preach into their lives. Praise be the name of the living God. Ch uh, chapter number 22. Chapter number 22. Uh, and it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, I am here. Here I am. Verses 2. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early. Again, here we see. Yesterday we said that, uh, is it yesterday or the day after yesterday? Abraham was, uh, was uh, told to circumcise his, 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 the males under him. And the Bible says that very day that the Lord spoke to him, Abraham obeyed. And here again we see when God spoke to Abraham, he did as God had said to him. He took his only beloved son Isaac and he headed towards the mountains of Moriah to make him a sacrifice unto his God. And so he took his young man with him and Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place far off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkeys, 
the Lord and I are going to go yonder and worship and he will come back to you. It is a prophetic statement here. So Abram took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abram, his father, and said, Father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abram said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Verses 9. And they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abram built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abram stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abram, Abram. So he said, here I am. Verse 12. And he said, do not lay your hands on the Lord or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, uh, your, your son, your only son, for me. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went, went, went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Now God appears to Abraham and he says, I want you to sacrifice my son. Abraham does not question. He walks up in obedience. You see, what Abraham is doing here was not a strange in the land that he has settled. The communities around him and perhaps even where Abraham had come from, it was, it was uh, part of their ways of worship to sacrifice their children. And so Abraham takes Isaac, takes his servants, and they go towards the mountain Moriah as God had commanded them to go. And as they go, they come uh, three days into the journey. Abraham sees where God wants him to sacrifice his son Isaac. He turns to his uh, servants and he tells them, listen, me and the boy will go over to the, to, the, to the sacrificial place. Don't worry, the son will come back to you. It is like a prophetic set statement. I don't know what was happening in Abraham's heart, but I know he was a man of faith. And so as he goes there, an interesting happens is that he takes the son, puts him on the altar, he wants to sacrifice him, and then behold, the Lord appears to him, and he tells him, Abraham, stop. I now know that you love me. I now know that you have faith in me. All these years that Abraham has walked with God, it is at this point, with all the waiting, with all the patience, it is at this point that now God acknowledges that Abraham loves him and he honors him. A couple of things arise in this text. Number one, when, God, when Abraham decided, I, uh, when, God spoke to, when God spoke to Abraham and told him, I want to sacrifice your son, God wanted to know, this is the son of your promise, not Ishmael. I've blessed Ishmael, he's gone, he's going to be great. But the covenant and the promise I have between you and me, I said it's going to be through Isaac. I now want to know, do you trust that regardless of Isaac being alive, that I'm still going to make you great? That was the statement that was, that is, this is what is happening in this text. It is not that God really wants the sacrifice of Isaac. No, 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 no. no. He wants to know, do you trust that your greatness is tied to me and not the blessings of Isaac. That's what God wants to know. Some of us think that your greatness is because you're going to get a job. No, 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 no. Your greatness is not tied to your job. Totally, totally, totally. It does not, your greatness does not depend on your job, on the people around you, because God may choose to use them as vessels to your greatness, but they are not the source. You see, uh, perhaps somebody would have thought, now because the promises of God, of God were attached to Isaac, then Isaac is the only vehicle, and without Isaac, Abraham will not be great. No, 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 no. So God told uh, uh, Abraham, come and sacrifice Isaac. I want to prove something here uh, to you. As you sacrifice Isaac, I want you to know, do you love the blessings 
more than the blessed son. Are we together? So by sacrificing Isaac, it meant that uh, Abraham was ready to sacrifice the greatness, the descendants, and just hope on what God had said. Because Isaac was just but a vessel. Let me say this. A lot of us, you may end up losing your job. It's very painful to lose your job. You may end up losing a, a spouse. Very painful to lose a spouse. You may end up losing a child. Very painful to lose a child. But I want you to know this. That your greatness and your destiny is attached to God's word and God's promise over your life. Never doubt because something or someone has been taken away from you that will not get to where God has called you to get into. Trust in God. Believe in his word. Believe in what he says. Put your faith in him. And I believe whatever you have spoken in your life will come to pass in the name of a Jesus Christ. So he knows that now, Abraham, now I know that you fear me. Now I know that you love me. Now I know that you honor me. For not withholding your son. Now I am ready to continue to walk with you. And it has taken all these years for God to make this statement. I want to pray over your life that you will not get tired to prove your faith before God. Ever, every day, every single day, every single year, God will keep on testing you. Situations will come to test your faith. Situations will come to test your fear towards God. I pray that you'll not lose faith and you'll not fail in your test. That when God looks at you, he knows that your heart is for him, that your love is for him, that your fear is based on his word. Please, saints, again, your destiny and your greatness is not first attached to things or people. It is first attached to God. He will choose to lead you to the greatness and he will choose to use any vessel, whether it is your job or the people around you, your spouse, your children, your parents. He may use them as, as vessels, but they are not the source of your greatness. Praise be the name of the living God. Verses 14, and Abraham called, I mean, verses 13, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and he looked, and there behind him, and there behind him, sorry, was a ram caught in, a, in the thicket by its own. So Abraham went and looked and, and took the ram, sorry, and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called on the place, the name, the, the, the name of the place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided for. It means Jehovah Jireh. In this place, the Lord shall provide. Listen, this is a prophetic statement. When um, uh, Abraham was setting his uh, son upon the altar, it was a prophetic statement when God stopped him. Because it's like God was telling Abraham, stop, it is not going to be your son. Thousands and thousands of years to come, I will provide my own sacrifice on behalf of the children of the earth. That was the statement. And um, as we go on this, uh, there's a preacher once who said that, if you, can you imagine, just imagine, God has said, said to Abraham, go and sacrifice your son. And he obeys and he goes to sacrifice his son. And then when he's just about lifting up this, the dagger or the knife, to sacrifice his son. The voice comes again and he says, Abraham will not be your son. And uh, he pauses and asks this question. What if Abraham did not access or hear the second voice? What would have happened? And uh, there is a danger here that even when God has spoken to you, always be sensitive to hear what he will instruct to you next. There are people who have stayed with what God said many, many years ago. They have built their lives around that. And every other time that God tries to give them a new instruction, they keep on disobeying or they become spiritually deaf to what God is saying and they end up messing their lives and blaming it on God. God speaks new in every season. God says something new in every season. Behold, I do a new thing, he says in the book of Isaiah. So I pray for a spiritual sensitivity 
to hear God every time he speaks into your life and the grace to obey what he says in your life. And so God provides a ramp for himself and this lad and, this, and the father, they offer a sacrifice before God and they make a declaration that is there present up today that on the mountain of the Lord, the Lord shall provide. Verse 15, and the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of the heaven and said, by myself I have sown, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing, I will bless you and multiply and I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and the sun which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Wow. Because he has obeyed his voice, then those are the blessings that will rest upon him and his descendants. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and went together to Bathsheba, and Abraham dwelt in Bathsheba. The blessings of obedience. When you are obedient to God, his blessings are sure in your life. When we come to look at uh, the book of Deuteronomy, we will see the covenant, the blessings that God dictates that he will rest upon the lives of those that obey him. The life of Christianity and the life of a child of God is a life of total surrender and total obedience to what God says. If we obey him, the Bible says, then if we obey and serve the Lord in the book of Job, that we will enjoy and spend our days in prosperity. That's the promises of God. Children of God, my brothers and sisters, my fellow award addicts, I pray today that we shall come to become addicted to what God says, and in obedience, do as he dictates in his word. Verses 20. Now it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Indeed, Milka also has born children to your brother Naor, has his firstborn, his firstborn, Baz, his brother Kemuel, and the father of Aram, Chesed, Azo, Pildash, Jidlaf, and Bethuel. And Bethel begot Rebekah, this eight, uh, this eight uh, Milka bore to uh, this eight Milka bore to Nao, Abraham's brother, his concubine whose name was Rehuma, also bore Teba, Gaham, uh, Pahash, and and Mak Maha. Listen, now you see here, even uh, uh, now uh, Abraham's brother, uh, you see the uh, the concubine or the maid servant of. Uh, uh, of his wife, also both children, to Naor. Uh, that is uh, uh, Tiba, Gaham, Pahash, and Maha, because that was their culture. That's what we are saying. When Sarah suggested this thing, it was not outside the culture. It was within their culture. But irrespective of the culture, God had made a promise, and they are saying, the promise will not come through Aga. The promise will come through Sarai, or Sarah. And so it was. Verses 23. Sarah lived 127 years. There were year, these were the years of the life of Sarah. So Sarah died, Sarah, uh, Sarah died in Kreja Arba, that is Abron, in the land of Canaan. And Abram came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Verses 3. Then Abram stood up from before his dead and spoke to the sons of earth, saying, I am a foreigner and a visitor amongst you. Give me property for a burial place amongst you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the sons of earth answered Abram, saying to him, Hear us, O Lord, my Lord, you are a mighty prince amongst us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our burial place. None of us will withhold you from his burial place that you may bury your dead. Then Abram stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, the sons of earth, and he spoke to, and he spoke to them, saying, if it is your wish that I bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and meet me at Ephron, the son of Zahor, uh, for me, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he has, which is at the end of the field. Let him give it to me at the full price as a property for a burial place amongst you. Now Ephron dwelt amongst the sons of Eth, and Ephron the Etite answered Abram in the presence of the sons of Eth. All who, who entered at the gate of a city saying, No, my Lord, hear me. I give you the field and the cave that is in it. I give it to you in the presence of the sons of my people. I give it to you. Bury your dead. 
Then Abram bowed himself down before the people of the land. And he spoke to Ephraim in the hearing of the people of the land, saying, If you will give it, please hear me. I will give you money for the field. Take it from me, and I will bury my dead there. Verses 14. And Ephron answered Abram, saying to him, My Lord, listen to me. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver. What, what is that between you and me? So bury your dead. And Abram listened to Ephron, Ephron and Abram weighed out the silver for Ephron, which he had, uh, he, had named, uh, he had named in the hearing of the sons of earth. 400 shekels of silver, currency of the merchants. So the field of Ephron, which was in uh, Machafel, uh, which was before Mamre, the field, and the cave which was in it, and all the trees that were in the field, which were with, uh, within all the surrounding borders, were, were deeded to Abram as a possession in the presence of the sons of Heth before, before all who went in at the, at the gate of a city, verses 19. And after this, Abram buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of, 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 of Machafel before Mamre, that is Abram, in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave that is in it we are deeded to Abram by the sons of earth as a property uh, for a burial, a place. That's about 400 shekels of uh, uh, silver that was weighed for the burial place for uh, Sarah. Now Abram comes to this point whereby now Sarah has lived 120 years by the grace of God and now she has departed the face of the earth. She's outlived by her husband, uh, Abraham. Abraham, sorry, and a son, Isaac. And um, Abraham goes to the people of this land in Abraham and tells them, I want to get a burial site that I may bury my wife. And they go ahead and tell him, you are a prince amongst us. Take any place, the choicest place you take. No one will, will withhold himself from the field that you choose. And Abraham says, I will buy it at full price. He has... He, 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 he zeroes into a field that he wants, a burial site that he wants, and he pays full price. He does not take advantage of them. He wants to buy it. Listen. There is power in buying and possessing land. It is in the will of God that his children may possess land. Abraham knew this, and he didn't want to take any chance with it. Where he buries his dead, he wants to make sure that he owns it. It is my prayer and my desire that everyone of us will have such an attitude. As God leads you, that you'll begin to own properties at full prices. You may get lands given to you, but make sure there is deed unto it. Abraham knew, these people, they call me a prince today, but they may come another person who will say they don't know me. And he wanted to secure a barrel place for his wife himself and his family. And he went ahead and bought it at full price. So he was a prince. They were ready to give him for free. But he insisted it must cost him something. I pray today that this year, may it be the year that God will offer you finances to buy property. To own land. A lot. To own property. To own land, to build, to get into the real estate. May God just open doors for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Now those are 127 years of the life of Sarah. She has rested. Uh, we are going to read from uh, chapters number 24 tomorrow, which will be day 8. And we shall see how the story progresses. Now we are transitioning slowly from Abraham and Sarah. We are getting into the life of Isaac. And we shall look at the life of Isaac, how he comes to get, uh, uh, to get married, how the father chooses a wife for him, uh, sends the messengers to choose a wife for him, and it's going to be interesting. And so I want to believe that you are a champion. You have survived the first week, we've, and we've just started. 51 weeks are ahead of us, and you're going to be faithful, and you're trusting God for the grace to finish this race in the name of uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to believe that um, you're, you're being blessed. And I want to ask you, please give us feedback. Send us a text, contact us, uh, send us a message on the WhatsApp, and we shall be glad to get back to you. 
send in your questions. We want to have a, bank, a question bank. My team is working around the corner, sending any questions. Those who are sending us, uh, we are combining, compiling those uh, questions. And by the grace of God, we shall address them as we finish the book of uh, Genesis before we get into the book of Exodus. Uh, if you want to partner with us, you're welcome to do that. You want to send us a, a, an offering, you want to send in your tithe, a love gift, uh, a, 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 a seed offering, you're welcome to do that. For Kingdom Advancement Giving, our chill number, it's 9527337. God loves a cheerful giver, and we believe as you respond in cheerfulness that the Lord will reward you and bless you in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray, Father, in the name that is above every other name. Once again, we thank you. We have come to the completion of one week. We thank you for what you've spoken to us since day one to day seven. Lord, there is so much ahead of us. And we are excited and ready to hear what you will speak to us. Lord, I pray for my listeners and my viewers that these uh, events shall not be in vain, but that you shall speak to us, you shall encourage us, you shall, uh, you know, manifest yourself in our lives in such a great, great and mighty way. We honor you and we love you. In Jesus' mighty name, we do trust, praying, and the living. Shalom, shalom, shalom. See you tomorrow, same time, same place. In Jesus' name, you are a blessed one. Amen.